All right, this is page 11 of uh, math analysis, I think. Yep. Um, and we're gonna do actually one of my favorite problems, our favorite kind of problems, uh, to do with degrees, minutes, seconds. Like not in general, but uh, this is definitely kind of my favorite question that you can use degrees, minutes, seconds on. So uh, we are given that the radius of the Earth is approximately 6,378.1 kilometers. I just Googled that um, and took the answer that it gave me. The Earth isn't like a perfect sphere, so this is really an approximation, but that's okay. It's like close enough for uh, our purposes. So what we wanna do is we wanna find the distance along the surface of the Earth. So along the surface of the Earth means uh, from like here to here, right? So you're gonna walk along the surface. You're not like digging through. So along the surface of the Earth, um, between two cities directly north of each other, whose latitudes are 45, 23, 14, and 11, 12, 52. So that's what we're going to try to do. So we need to understand like what those mean. So the first one is uh, the distance, not the distance, the angle formed here. So this angle is going to be the angle that is 45, 23, 14. Okay, so that's our angle there. I'm gonna erase that because I don't really want it like in the way. Uh, but I do know that this here is 45 degrees, 23 minutes, 14 seconds. Okay, and then the other angle that we're given, 11 degrees, 12 minutes, 52 seconds, is gonna be this angle formed there. So that's 11, 12, 52. 11 degrees, 12 minutes, 52 seconds. And we wanna find the distance along the surface of the earth between the two cities. So if you look at it, uh, what else do we know? We know that this, I'm just gonna call this R. I'm gonna say that R is 6378.1. So this is R and we're finding the distance, but the distance is along the circumference of a circle so this is actually arc length, this is S. And I know that uh, S is equal to R times theta. So S equals R theta. I know that because I memorized it, right? But the key thing here is that this is in radians. So I need to figure out what this angle is right here in radians. So I'm gonna call this theta. I need to find it in radians. Well, so to find it in radians, there's two different things we can do. One of them is we can do it by hand, and the other one is we can do it by calculator. We're gonna do it by calculator. We're gonna pretend that we're doing it by hand. So I'm gonna find the difference between uh, this angle and this angle, because the difference between them should give me theta. So I'm going to find that, um, and that'll just be, so I need to do theta equals, all right, the bigger angle is 45, 23, 14, and then minus 11, 12, 52. I'm gonna let the calculator take care of that. There's no, there's no need to do it by hand. You could do it by hand. Um, it's kind of neat actually, it like involves place value and sometimes you have to borrow like, like one minute is 60 seconds. So you borrow like from one minute you change it into 60 seconds and you go from there. It's actually kind of neat. Um, but this will be in degrees, minutes, seconds. So I'm going to convert that to radians by multiplying by pi over 180. Okay, I'm going to use a calculator for that. And then my answer is going to be r times theta. So I'm going to say, therefore, s equals. And now let's, let's try to use a calculator for that. So uh, we're going to switch over and see what we can do. Okay. So I'm currently in degree mode. I'm gonna just change it to radian mode. So I just change it by clicking. You can do doc seven, two, and then switch. You gotta know how to switch really fast. So I'll change it here to degrees. You can see degrees up there. Do it again, doc seven, two, and then switch arrow down, arrow to the right, and then arrow to radians uh, and press enter. All right, here we go. I'm gonna use the template for degrees, minutes, seconds. So it's gonna be 45 tab 23, tab 14. And then just do minus and then use the template again. And the calculator's gonna do it. 11, tab 12, tab 52. Press enter, since I'm in radians, 
it will give me the answer in radians. It's going to subtract them in degrees, minutes, seconds. It's going to convert that to radians. So I get that, whatever that is. Okay, I'm just going to multiply that times six, whoops, six, three, seven, eight point one, and I get three, eight. So I need three decimals. So I'm going to arrow up and get that. So S is three, eight, zero, four point zero seven four. And then uh, this will be in kilometers. So I'm, I'm just writing it into the notes. Now, what if you had been in degrees, right? So uh, I'm just going to click to do it, but doc 72, and then you, you just kind of change it. So if I had been in degrees, then when I did this, I would get this. So this is the exact value in degrees. It's not in decimal degrees because we didn't do control enter or put a decimal point like anywhere in the problem. Um, I'm going to take this and convert this into radians by multiplying by pi over 180 press enter and you can see the two results are the same right so you have to know your calculator is really good at doing things but it's not capable of knowing what to do you have to tell it what to do so we told it i want you to be in radians the first time and do the subtraction and it gave you the result in radians the second time we were like we're going to be in degrees and then it gave you the answer in degrees and you have to convert it so that's just something to kind of like be aware of now there's also a weird thing, which I don't really use that much, um, but say we get this, this is in degrees, right? Uh, if you go into, let me see if I can find it, go into the catalog, press two, and then arrow down until you find the like angle thing. Oh, arrow, it's the second one, I, did, I missed it. Um, in here, da, 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 let's see, convert, convert, convert to radians and it'll do it. Isn't that crazy? Um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know why I would ever use that. It also puts this weird like parentheses R thing around it so you can see that it's in radians, but it's built in. Like there's a built-in way to convert to radians, which is kind of insane. Um, so I don't ever really use that, but you should know that things exist. So there you go, that exists. Uh, let's go back to the notes and see what the next question is. So, We've already found the, so this is our, our uh, distance along the surface of the earth, right? This is S. So maybe I'll highlight it in the same color. So the S is over there. This is S. S is the distance between these cities along the surface. So that's if you walked, right? Now, the next question is weirder. What if you were able to dig a tunnel between the cities? How long would that be? All right, this uses stuff that we haven't expressly talked about, uh, yet this year, but it's review. So hopefully you kind of remember it. So let's see, I'm gonna draw in the tunnel. Okay, and then if you look at the picture, we're trying to find the length of the tunnel. Now we have this angle theta, which we definitely know, right? We worked that out. So we know theta, we know the radius. Since this is uh, essentially a sphere, this is also the radius. Which means this triangle that I'm looking at, so I'm looking at a triangle here, 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 is actually an isosceles triangle. That gives me an idea. So I know how to work with an isosceles triangle. So let me go back. I'm gonna draw another version of the picture. And I'm just gonna draw it so that it looks a little more like how I'd like to work with this. So here, and then like here, and then here. Okay, so this is, we're pretending this is isosceles, which maybe it is, who knows. R, R, and then uh, this full thing is like the tunnel. So I'm gonna say like T for tunnel, right? And let me go back over here and say, this would be T for tunnel. Okay, so we know it's an isosceles triangle. So if we drop the altitude here, go, there we go. Okay, now you can tell it's definitely not isosceles, but it was supposed to be isosceles. Um, if we drop this altitude, we know that it actually bisects the base. So we know that this is t over two, and this is also t over two. Or I guess I could have just done the tick marks. I think it's better to like make it explicit. Um, it also bisects the vertex angle. So this angle here now is theta over two. And the other one is also theta over two, but we don't really need all of that information. So what we can do is, uh, I'm gonna redraw it again, because I think it's always a good idea. Basically, I always draw every triangle the same way. And I'm also gonna make you do it. 
Um, so I always draw my triangles that I'm trying to trig, that I'm trying to trig, whatever that means. Um, I always draw them so that the angle I'm interested in is at this corner here. So this is, this is theta over two. And then uh, this is opposite, so it's actually T over two. Well, it's capital T, so I shouldn't, capital T over two. Um, and then I know that this is R. I know from, I know R and I know theta from the previous part, right? So I have opposite and I have hypotenuse. So what trig ratio should I use? Opposite hypotenuse, I'm gonna use sine. Sine is opposite. So the sine of, in this case, theta over two, because that's our angle that we're interested in, uh, or that we know rather, is opposite, which is t over two. And just when you're not sure, use parentheses, right? So t over two, it's plenty good. That's r. Um, so I can use a calculator here to actually solve this. Um, if you simplify it, you get sine of theta over two is equal to t over two r which means that T, the whole tunnel, is 2R sine of theta over two. Okay, so the mode that we're in is gonna matter a lot because trig functions are really dependent upon what type of angle you throw into them. Um, so we're gonna use calculator now. Let's go here, back to the calculator. We have to be careful though. So I'm in uh, degrees. I'd rather just do this in radians. So I'm gonna click to change to radians or doc 72, whichever. Um, and then the one that was in rate, so this is the, the radian measure of theta. So I'm gonna do two times, R is 63, 6378.1 times, uh-oh, frozen, unfreeze yourself. There we go. Um, times the sine of theta, which is the answer, divided by two, and I'm going to press enter. So I get three, and I need three decimals. So 37.941, three, seven, three, seven, seven I'm going to write that down. So T is approximately 3747. Seven. After it freezes, it often doesn't let me go back to the notes. So uh, I'm going to write this down. Hopefully, we're going to get back to the notes. It's no guarantee of that. Um, so that's our tunnel length. So I'm gonna, in the notes, I'll be highlighting some things. And if we can get back to the notes, I will show you that. Otherwise, you know, we're, I don't know. Might end up redoing the video, hopefully not, because that's terrible. Uh, you can make your life a lot easier if you store more things. So I'm gonna store R is 6378.1. I'm gonna store theta, uh, and I'm just gonna store it as like TH for theta, colon equals uh, this value, and press enter. Now, when I go up, I can do 2R times sine. Sine, by the way, there's a trig button. I don't know if you've ever done trig before. Uh, I assume you have, because it's like supposed to be in at least one and possibly two courses before this. Um, sine of, and now I can do TH over two. And it's like, I never need to wonder. It's like so much easier to do that. So I recommend that you store values. I know that people don't, but you should really be using the VAR key like all the time. Um, it just makes your life a lot easier. So I'm gonna to try to do the next one. Hopefully I can get back to the notes. Hopefully in the video it goes back to the notes. We'll find out when we get there. Usually what I do is I like, if the video works, I'm just like so happy about it. And then uh, I restart my computer uh, before I make the next video. All right, at its deepest point below the surface, how far down would the tunnel be? So uh, just to show you a couple of things that I did, uh, I, I wrote that. I also highlighted this and this in the same color to indicate like that they're the same thing. Um, so now let's think about this. So we drew this little picture here, right? So we drew this. So if we take that picture and add in the surface of the earth uh, and maybe like not label quite so many things. And also I'm gonna draw it like kind of the way that it was, right? It was like sort of, it was nothing like this, but like kind of. So <laughs> this, and then uh, I need to now draw like an arc through here. Is that, nope. Oh, I thought it would like make an arc and I was like really excited by that prospect. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so we're trying to find how far down 
this, uh, how far below, at its deepest point below the surface, how far down would the tunnel be? Okay, so its deepest point is actually, if we take this thing, right, and draw it in, try to draw it in, right? Okay, so the thing we're actually looking for in this particular problem is that, right? That's the difference between uh, going from the center of the earth all the way out to the surface and going from the center of the earth to the tunnel. And that'll be the deepest point because uh, that's like the midpoint of the tunnel and you can see that that would be the place where that happens. I mean, it also like logically works out that way, I think, if you think it through. So now, what do I want to do? Well, I need to know this thing. So I'm going to call it just, uh, I'm going to call it X because I think that that's a good variable to use when you, you know, have it available. So really, I'm dealing with uh, this picture again, except now I need to solve for the side we didn't solve for right there. So I'm going to redraw it. You do a lot of redrawing. And, you know, I mean, I think that's fine. I often don't put the right angle in my triangles, which probably drives some people insane. I don't know. I mean, you know, we know that it is. It's our picture. Like, what are we going to do? Uh, so this is X. All right, what do we know that relates also Pythagorean theorem, right? We could have. Uh, we know what T is, so we know what T over 2 is. We know what R is. You could use a Pythagorean theorem. Not a problem. I'm in this, like, weird trig mode, so I thought that I would do that instead. Uh, we know the side adjacent to the angle. We know the radius or the hypotenuse, I guess, of the triangle. So we can actually say that uh, cosine of theta over 2 is um, adjacent, which is x, over r. So x is going to be r cosine of theta over 2. Okay, so we're going to solve for that, but that won't be the answer. Right, because the actual answer that we're looking for, so the the deepest part is going to be the actual radius of the circle minus whatever we got for x. So the, the deepest part is actually r minus x. All right, so we just have to find r and uh, no, we have to find x, and then once we know what x is, we'll subtract. So I'm gonna go back to the calculator. Hopefully this video is working. Oh man, the the like levels of despair that I achieve when these things don't work out is uh, something to behold, which lucky for you, you don't ever have to behold. So R, which I have stored, times cosine of theta, which I have stored over two. So that's X, and then I wanna do R minus X. So uh, I'm getting 281.511, which is insanely deep. Uh, I'm not even sure that's right. To, so theta, over two, I think it might be uh, 281.511 281 kilometers. That's like super deep. Uh, is there anything about the problem that would let us like get a sense of how accurate that is? I don't know that there necessarily is. I mean, so one of the things, oh, one of the things we can do, hold on, let me go back to the calculator. Uh, another thing that we could do, I guess, is we could do uh, the Pythagorean theorem to find x, right? So that would be uh, the square root of the radius squared minus that answer that we had gotten, which was uh, this thing, I think. Um, t, three, seven, four, yeah, this thing squared is that. And then this, that's a very different answer. Is that a very different answer? That's t, oh, t over 2 squared. Jeez, look at me. That was, a, I mean, that was a very different answer. This is supposed to be half of the tunnel, not the full tunnel. This, um, which is the same value. So I'm thinking that this answer is just absurd, uh, but like, fine. Like, it's, it's a crazy answer because like, I don't know how deep humanity has actually gone, but like, I don't think it's, anywhere near it. Like you can look it up, like what are the deepest tunnels ever dug or the deepest just generally holes. I don't think it's much more than like a, a couple miles. And this is out of this world. This is so deep. Um, but that's okay. I mean, like nobody said they did it. It's like a what if. 
if if they could do it. Suppose a tunnel was dug, right? Like maybe this isn't even Earth, although it does say it's on Earth. Um, so I think that's our answer. You know, sometimes you get surprising answers. Is it reasonable? It's correct for this problem. I don't think it's reasonable for the real world to dig this tunnel, but like, how are you gonna dig a tunnel between cities that are 3,800 kilometers apart? Like that, it, that tunnel is gonna be so long um, and, and just insane. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna cut this here. Hopefully the video worked uh, and I will see you in the next one.